easy to see some Cuthbert's cave stepping forward from that. It was just his first run over hurdles. He's a bumper winner as well for Rose Dobbin back at Kelso back in May. And great universe, he handles this track well, handled it really well, and this grand at this track when he won his bumper back in March last year. Good up to Gary. Riders maiden hurdle. Just under two circuits of the track, and they're on the way to the first of a dozen flights. And it's the hot favourite, Chapeau de Soleil, who leads them over it to St. Cuthbert's Cave. They're all over it OK. There was a slight mistake in midfield from Monslat, and the back marker in these early stages is Grizzly Adams, who's already a little bit detached. So they turn. Racing on to the highest point of the track, Chapeau de Soleil, the leader here, under Patrick Mullins, to St. Cuthbert's Cave. And Harry Swan as they take flight number two, jumping it in third, Bally Brack Wood. Monslat again wasn't all that fluent. Another one who lost a little bit of ground in the air in mid division, Piper's Boreen. As they now arrive at the third, Chapeau de Soleil hurdling well. Building up a lead of a couple of lengths over St. Cuthbert's Cave. And then up on the outside, moving into a handy position is Magic Saddler. There on the inside in the predominantly red jacket, Bally Brack Wood. And they're tracked on the approach to the fourth by Prince Palace and on Lover's Walk as the leader didn't get very high that time, Chapeau de Soleil, wrapped the flight. And the advantage is down to a length now over St. Cuthbert's Cave with Magic Sadler disputing third on the outside of Bally Brackwood and in amongst those two is Prince Palace. Then on Lover's Walk, who's followed on the descent by Piper's Boreen. After these, we have Chosen Time, followed by the Lucky Lobster, who's in off the subs bench here. That one racing in company at this stage as they come downhill with Haji, and in between those two is Great Universe. And further back then, Hatfield Hammer, Glass Acres, Mon Slat on the outside of Howl a Minute, and then Val Rapide, and a few lengths to Grizzly Adams, who's still bringing up the rear and just being encouraged along by rider Luke Burke-Ott. Into the straight they come then on the first of two occasions. Chapeau de Soleil moving out off the rail. Leads by just over a length now to St. Cuthbert's Cave and Magic Sadler and Bally Brackwood and the yellow sleeve jacket of Prince Palace. Very good second at Nace last time out. Followed on the approach to the next, which will be number five by On Lover's Walk. Chapeau de Soleil over that one, jumped it well and all getting over it okay. On they come now to the one in front of the stands, Chapeau de Soleil, again put in a good leap there, and just flattening the flight that time in midfield was chosen time. The order then as they head out in their final circuit, Chapeau de Soleil to St. Cuthbert's Cave, and then Magic Sadler, followed by Prince Palace, Bally Brackwood, and on Lover's Walk, Great Universe is edging closer, up on the outside of Piper's Boreen as they go around this turn, and then we have Haji, followed by Chosen Time. And then on the inside, the Lucky Lobster, Hatfield, Hammer, Glass Acres, Hell a Minute, few lengths to Monslat, who's towards the rear in company with Val Rapide and Grizzly Adams. Now they meet what was their first, this time around it's number seven. And once again, it was Chapeau de Soleil, leading by a couple of lengths to St. Cuthbert's Cave, followed in third position by Magic Sadler, who's never been too far away, Prince Palace, is taking closer order now in fourth on the outside of Bally Brackwood. And then we have on Lover's Walk. A few of them really starting to struggle now at the back, the likes of Monslat and the Lucky Lobster as the leaders go over the first one down the back. Val Rapide and Howl a Minute are two others who are beating a retreat very quickly. Here's the middle one down the far side, Chapeau de Soleil, again jumping well from St. Cuthbert's Cave. Bally Brackwood made a slight mistake there and it is dropping back, getting a reminder or two. As they come on to the final one in this section, three from home, Chapeau de Soleil, the leader from St. Cuthbert's Cave, who's been his nearest pursuer throughout. Magic Sadler still there in third, and then Prince Palace as they take this one. Slight mistake there from St. Cuthbert's Cave, who now comes off the bridle. Great Universe is continuing to edge closer for Derek O'Connor as they make the descent now to the final half mile in the Clonmel Races.ie Qualified Riders Maiden Hurdle. Chapeau de Soleil to up on the outside, Magic Sadler running a big race. Then St. Cuthbert's Cave is trying to get back into it, followed by Great Universe, couple of lengths to Prince Palace, who's being driven along. On Lover's Walk is still there with a chance. Then there's a break of a length and a half to find chosen time. 
Racing downhill then, Chapeau du Soleil with up on the outside, Magic Sadler. And they're followed a couple of lengths back by Great Universe. And after these is on Lover's Walk, St. Cuthbert's Cave has now cried enough. Prince Palace staying on with chosen time as they're about to swing in. Chapeau de Soleil and Magic Sadler, nothing between them. Great Universe is in third, about two lengths back. And then Chosen Time, who stays on as they race on to the second last flight. Chapeau de Soleil from coming under pressure now on the stand side, Magic Sadler. Then Great Universe in third as they set their sights on two out. Chapeau de Soleil sizing it up. Didn't jump it particularly well, but came away about three lengths clear from Magic Sadler. Then Great Universe Chosen Time is still staying on, but down to the 12th and final flight. Chapeau de Soleil jumps that one really well and is going to come home. A clear cut winner here on his return to action. Chapeau de Soleil and Patrick Mullins in the Ritchie colours for Willie Mullins. Scores in great style from Chosen Time, who stayed on well in second. Great Universe in third, and a fine run in fourth from Magic Sadler. We've just seen Chapeau de Soleil run out a really good winner of our latest race. I'm delighted to be joined by his rider, Patrick Mullins. Patrick, well done. You all look very straightforward from here. Yeah, not usually the case in this race. Uh, I think I've fallen off one to ten shots. I've got two grade one winners beating it. I fell at second last last year. So, um, uh, But no, that's look, last year we thought he was a grade one horse. Thought it, I thought he was my champion bumper horse. And he hung very badly in his first race. And we never got him right after that. We could never find anything, but he, was, he looked poorly and he wasn't working like he can. He's come back in this summer. He looks great, working well, and hopefully he'll make into a good one horse now. And you had no inhibitions about going right-handed again with him today? No, he, um, he, uh, he was fine. Uh, he settled. You know, I think the day in Fairy House, there was no pace, and we were trying to hold him up. And he just Sometimes when you're pulling back against the horse, they can pull one way or the other. Yeah. So I let him, let him bowl away there today. And, and when there's hurdles as well, sometimes they something to keep him interested in looking at, and I think that was the case with him. Uh, his jumping was really good today, wasn't it? He was, but look, I think, he, I think he's Colin Bowes. Um, those point of pointers. I'm not sure what happened at the second last. I think the other horse came up beside us, and when that dropped away, he was leaning a bit left into it. Um, but once he straightened up, then he was fine. Yeah, do you think he'd be okay on better ground as well? It's pretty soft out there. It's very soft air. He handled it very well. His wind is very clear. Um, I can't see any reason he wouldn't go on nicer ground. Um, I couldn't see any, he's not a heavy framed horse. He should should be able to go on it. Good. And Patrick, the dust has settled a wee bit on the weekend. Good weekend for you, a couple of crossbars as well, but a few good winners as well. Yeah, but that weekend is often like that with us. I remember one year riding Fernie Holland, appreciated in the two bumpers, and they both got beat. Um, so, look, in Paris Pass, I thought was ran very well. Um, I think being the time he probably just got tired. You know, I know they went slow, but they got racing kind of early, and then Jack was able to keep pushing our fella. In an ideal world, I think Paul would have rather been coming at Jack. Um, but I felt it turned a bit fresh early on, and Jack was able to start him behind Paul rather than the other way around. Um, so, like, I'd like to think he should be able to improve on that. Whether he's going to improve enough to be Constitution Hill, that's the question. Well, like, it was his first run out of Novice Company and taking on a really good horse well, like Tiapu, who had plenty in his favour as well going into the race. That's your uh, Tiapu is, is an, a brilliant horse. That's probably his ideal race, and I think you, can, you don't never know, but I would think he's, he was probably readier than we were. Um, interesting. I think the first three all ran pound to pound to their ratings. Um, but I do think our fella should be able to improve five or six pounds, you know. Yeah, good. And I am Maximus. He was really good in the Drinmore with that novice. Um, yeah, look, that was a bit. That was a nice surprise. Uh, he was a novice, obviously, because he won after the first of February. So that was his last day as a novice. Jordan McGarvey was fantastic on him. I think we might have to revise giving Paul Town all the credit for winning the Irish National. <laughs> How he nearly got a Grade One winner beaten a handicap, I don't know. But um, Jody got on really well with him. Looked different race, smaller field, and um, but I suppose if he's going to be able to jump straighter and better. Um, you know, he could turn up, turn into one of those Gold Cup horses. Yeah. Oh, good luck, good weekend, and lots to look forward to the season ahead. Well done, Patrick. Great. Thanks so much. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.